not an opportunity for every individual in a position of power in that administration to be accountable, to be brought forward. This is what Congress is about, by the way. Congress has failed in its responsibility. The majority in the Congress has not lived up to its obligation to, to be a co-equal branch of government, to provide a check and a balance on administration power. This is a constitutional requirement. This is something we've been lacking, and, it, and the American people have paid dearly for it. And all across this country, there's this great uh, sense that uh, we're mired in a war right now that's sapping our lifeblood, that's wasting tremendous financial resources, that's causing us to borrow from from China to have a war in, in Baghdad. And you know what? The people are saying enough is enough. I'll tell you something. You know what? what is stunning is that when you do see people under oath, which is very rare in Washington these days, but I recall seeing General Batiste and uh, 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 Colonel, uh, Colonel Hames, uh, they were under oath, and they, when you're under oath, my God, when you hear the truth, it makes your head spin. They testified about uh, the military being broken. They, they testified about the lack of, 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 of decency and common knowledge that should be coming from Donald Rumsfeld, the lack of a plan, the lack of a strategy, the lack of care about not having a plan and strategy, that he should not be the Secretary of Defense. I mean, it was just on one subject, whether or not Donald Rumsfeld was doing a, a, a good job by our military and by our troops and by our generals, and was he representing the truth of what they were, the commanders on the ground were telling the President and the Secretary of Defense. And obviously the answer under oath was, no, he's not telling the truth about what we tell him. We told him we'd need at least 600,000 troops, which is what we had in the, uh, the first Gulf War, and that wasn't even to take Baghdad. Uh, we told him that it wasn't working. We told him that we didn't have enough vehicles. We told him we didn't have the right equipment. We told him we didn't have a supply line to repair equipment we had. It was stunning to see somebody under oath. So I myself would call Dick Cheney. And I would start with the energy meetings and find out who was in them, what was that about, subpoena those documents, and maybe all the answers to this war of choice just might come to the surface. Well, I can tell you that uh, that uh, not just, you know, I, I, um, I can speak, I think, for a number of people who are very concerned about the the lies that have been told. And, and there has been no one who's been held accountable. All of these soldiers dying all of the money that's been wasted which lie of all the lies and they told so many it's almost like i need a uh, recipe card catalog to uh, you know keep track of them it's a lot of work to keep track of this administration's lies but i've managed to do you know a pretty good job of it and i know that you have too but which one is the one that most of all you'd like to expose well well again you know i'm i'm not uh, you know I, I think we we have to be cautious about going after individuals, but the administration uh, made a claim that uh, Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Uh, they sent Colin Powell to the United Nations to back up that claim. Uh, there were people in the administration who knew, diff who knew better. Uh, their uh, concerns and the information they brought to the administration was swept aside I think that we need to get deeply into this process. Now, some people have written books no, about it. No, a lot of books. There, there, you know, there's been a lot of books written, but there's never been a sorting out of it in front of the American people through, I the, myself like through the, the congressional process. I like the visual. Here's what I would do. I would just run a rerun of the day when the inspectors were on the ground bulldozing al Sabun missiles with a time date stamp, and then I would run on the same day Bush saying, Saddam won't let the inspectors in. You know, and start right. there. Anyway, I, I appreciate uh, that uh, you were available because these, the, the, I looked at this and I was like, oh my, you know, I watch all your floor speeches and some of uh, the, the quotes are so out of context that you would think that you wanted to have Osama's baby, which is like what they did to Max Cleland, you know. But, I understand, you know, but, but here's the thing. My, my skin is pretty thick and I appreciate yeah, I the support of people around the country. And I'm glad that the word's getting out as to what the Republican Party is doing and smearing members of Congress, not just myself, but, you know, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, uh, you know, our, our Chairman Howard Dean. I mean, it's been a, they're having a field day, but why? What is this all about? It's about pure terror. They're, now right. we know exactly what they're afraid of, Democrats, and, and oversight, accountability. Exactly. Right. So, my, so my role... 
uh, to, you know, and, and again, all these all these decisions have to be made yet as to, you know, exactly who's going to be doing what. But apparently, the Republicans are very concerned that I'm going to be playing a, a, a role in uh, in in oversight of their misdeeds in the next, uh, uh, you know, during the next Congress. And so, I'm. I guess in one way I should be flattered, but in another way, it really is quite telling when you see that the Republican Party. Uh, would would single a member of Congress out who is uh, who's you know serving on a subcommittee that has oversight as a way of trying to scare people into uh, into backing away from supporting Democrats. It's not happening. I'm telling you, people are ready. They're ready for answers. We've had all the lies. We've had all the action. We see the the results of the action. Well, well, Where I want we're... people to know uh, that I cannot be intimidated. I can't be intimidated by the. Uh, by by these individuals in the White House who have run roughshod. Don't worry about it. I got, you cannot know, happen. I, I believe you, and I know you, and that is the truth. Thanks, Dennis. We'll talk to you soon. Good luck. Good okay, luck. us for more information. Good. Randy Rhodes, the woman that Carl Rove secretly wishes he could be. Mm-hmm. 